about college basketball's Final Four was this weekend. Let's go ahead and discuss that. Uh, the first thing on that, how about the Gonzaga-UCLA game? I was dead wrong on my pick on this. I thought Gonzaga was going to be able to just wipe the floor with them. And, and here's the thing. Gonzaga played a pretty good game. If you go and look, I've told you all about this before. Follow on Twitter, at ShotQuality. According to the quality of the shots that were taken, Gonzaga should have scored 98 points. And they scored 91. Or 93. That seems to make sense, right? So it's, it's close. They missed some shots that they probably should have made, whatever, etc. The other side of this is UCLA, according to the shots that they took, should have scored 78 points. And they scored 90. Or sorry, sorry, Gonzaga scored 93 points. And, and they should have scored 98 UCLA should have scored 78 points, and they scored 90. That is absolutely incredible. Their mid-range game was unbelievable. On the season, they averaged 49.9% from two-point. And in this game, they shot damn near 65%. Just unbelievable. Uh, the, the MVP of the game was Joel Ayayi, and he was unreal. I mean, just unreal, but he wasn't even the star of the game. Uh, the guy that made uh, the the most clutch shot, of course, Jalen Suggs hitting the half-court shot at the buzzer to win the game. But uh, Andrew Nimhard hit a three that, that you know, got it to where it was. It, 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 there were so many clutch plays in this game. Johnny Juzang was unbelievable again. He had such a ridiculous run in this NCAA tournament. Cody Riley uh, showed out in a way that I did not think that he was capable of. Uh, 14 points here. I mean, he he had, uh, let's see, uh, offensive rebounds. He had two, two. He had eight defense rebounds, so 10 total rebounds on him. I'm looking at the Kim Palm box score, by the way. Um, I mean, Hamey Haikes, like, just ridiculous. Like, I, I, he had 19 points. Tiger Campbell, um, he had 17 points. I just, I did not see this coming from UCLA. They played out of their minds in this game. And it made it so much more entertaining. Because the first game, I absolutely was a dud. And we'll talk about that uh, here in just a minute. But I think the the only game that was worth talking about was was the Zags and, and the Bruins. Mick Cronin, what he did in this tournament, I don't know how he did it. I will never understand it. And we see this every year, right? Anytime that we have the NCAA tournament, there's a team that turns it on and does something completely unexpected. And UCLA making it to this point was unexpected. But the way that they played in this game against this, now we call, we, we've said this on our show many, many times about Alabama football. It's, let's see, joyless murder ball is what they call it. There's no emotion. It's just this constant, you know, whipping of teams over and over and over again. And teams of, or fans of other teams look at it and think that there is no fun in that. But when you have a situation like this, remember Gonzaga had never been in a game this close. There were no clutch moments for them. They had won 29 of their prior 30 games by double digits. 29 out of 30. So none of them had come down to the wire. They had not had to be tested at all. There was no adversity for them all season. Even the game that, that they won by single digits was still multiple possessions. It didn't come down to a last-minute possession. It didn't come down to... Uh, a game-tying three or a, a, a game-winning buzzer beater or anything like that, they are undefeated and they have destroyed everybody except for UCLA. And who would have possibly seen this coming? USC beat UCLA twice this season. And and won at their house and all that. And now, we can talk about this in a minute with the buzzer beaters. But UCLA is not as good as USC, and Gonzaga in just the game before this, just a few days ago, wiped the floor with USC. I mean, it wasn't even a game. It wasn't close. And in this situation, at UCLA, how heartbreaking is it to lose this way, right? You lose your regular season finale to USC on a buzzer-beating three-pointer at home. And then the Alabama game in the Sweet 16 just two games ago they lose, or not lose, but they end up having to go to overtime after they feel like they've won the game based on a half-court buzzer beater that goes in and sends it to overtime. 
And then in this spot, you score a bucket to tie the game with three seconds left, and then the defense doesn't get back. They don't guard Jalen Suggs. And with 3.3 seconds left, that is enough time for three dribbles to get up the court. And if anybody had gotten in his way, if anybody had guarded him, made him side dribble, anything like that, one, it makes the shot extremely more difficult. And two, it makes it where it's it's you may not even get a shot off if he doesn't have a chance to actually line it up. From where he was, he just drove straight and, and actually was able to square up to shoot the ball. So UCLA, in that position, had one blunder in that spot, and it cost them the ballgame. And that sucks, man. It, it, the, the luck that you have to lose your, your regular season finale, to have another game in the NCAA tournament in the Sweet 16 that was forced into overtime after you thought you had won it, uh, all on buzzer-beating three-pointers. That is crazy. And, and two of them, two in the NCAA tournament, you you had from basically half court or 35 feet, somewhere around there. It, it, the luck on that is insane. But Gonzaga, I mean, showed again. It, right now, it, it does make the Monday night game a little more interesting, right? It, because these are the two teams that we have thought about this entire time. It's been Gonzaga and Baylor from the word go. They were preseason number one and number two. They were supposed to play back in December. There was a COVID pause. They didn't get to play the game. And I think it's probably better that they didn't. Instead, we you know we don't have a revenge factor here. We don't have this game that we've already seen. I think that would have taken some of the shine off of it. I think this could be an absolute classic on Monday night with Gonzaga and Baylor. The line right now is four and a half in favor of Gonzaga. And and look, there are a lot of people that are looking at it going, you know, uh, Baylor's kind of killing everybody right now. They they are steamrolling teams, and Gonzaga just played you know UCLA in eleven seed. Just got taken to overtime, had to win on a on a buzzer beater. You know, is there value with the four and a half? Eh. You know, we'll we'll make a pick on the Monday live show. But uh, what an absolute gem of a game! I, we we talked in our group chat with Chris and myself and, and our Westlot Pirates buddies about whether or not this was a a top three NCAA tournament game of all time. And I, I talked about you know all right, so there's the Leitner game. We discussed that one. That was, you know, Kentucky and Duke, but that was a, a regional game. So is this the best Final Four game of all time? And it's very possible that it was because the other one that we were thinking of was Villanova, North Carolina. That was 77-74 just a couple of years ago, or a few years ago. And that one was for a national title, so obviously that one meant more because if, if Gonzaga doesn't win on Monday night, then this game, not to say it was meaningless, obviously it got them to a national title game, but they were just there a couple of years ago as well. So... You know, we'll we'll see what the meaning of this game actually was, but I think as far as a classic game goes, it absolutely was was top three. Uh, certainly top five. I think it was absolutely top three. It could have been the best of all time. I don't remember a Final Four game that was as good as this one. Uh, and if we're going by round specific, I, I think that's the way that it has to go. But I, I don't remember being as entertained during a ball game as I was with this one. Mick Cronin? Uh, deserves all the hype and the accolades and whatnot that he's going to get after this tournament run. Uh, I don't know that another coach deserves it, honestly. I mean, it, it, what he went through at Cincinnati and moving over to Westwood, I think this is awesome. I think this is great. He's always been a great coach. We talked about it last week. He had had trouble getting out of that first weekend. He had only reached the Sweet 16 once, never beyond that. This season, he makes it all the way to a Final Four in just his second year uh, at UCLA. I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. Gonzaga, Mark Few, now has a chance to win his first national championship. Of course, Scott Drew doing the same thing. But, uh, but man, how how bananas of a game was that? I absolutely loved it. All right, let's move on from there. Uh, the, the Houston-Baylor game, I mean, what is there to say? Like, uh, Baylor absolutely wiped the floor with them. It was not close. 78-59, to 59, the final. Uh, Houston... What where they really, really got burned was the first half. And they played them about even in the second half, but once you go down 45 to 20 at the half, it's done. It's over. It's kaput. There's nothing else you can do there. They they gave up too many threes. And I, I brought this up on Friday's show, right? I said, I don't know that Houston has seen anything like this Baylor team all season. And I think it's going to hurt them early. 
And once they got acclimated to it, yeah, they were fine. I mean, they they took it from a 25-point deficit at the half to only losing by 19. So they outscored them by six in the second half. But if you lose the game by 19 points, does it really matter? Once you're down 25, the game's done. You are not going to be able to come back on this Baylor team like that. They only Houston only scored 59 points in the game. 59 points. And the only player that kept them in it was Marcus Sasser. He had 20 points. He was 5-9 and nine from three. But in the first half, he was the only one that was able to score. It was insane to watch. So I, uh, I do think the two best teams are there, and I am excited to be able to see it.